And Mr. Hopkins, by the way, has recently been making another film, 84 Charing Cross Road, in which his co-star was Anne Bancroft. This is the true story of an American writer, Helen Hanf, who struck up a relationship over 20 years with the employees of a bookshop in central London. Her book of letters has already been adapted into a highly successful TV and stage play by Hugh Whitemore, who also wrote the film script. The picture's been made in a rather unusual way in that it was shot in two halves, with the stars never actually meeting, as we discovered when we visited them on both sides of the Atlantic. Produced by Mel Brooks's company and stars his wife, Anne Bancroft, who'd wanted to play the part of Helen Hunt ever since she read the original book of letters. Now, was that because she felt she's at all like the real Helen Hunt? Well, I'm a lot more like her now than I was six months ago. You know, when you work on the road, you sort of find the things that you. You sort of discover a person, and then you try to find those things in yourself. I think it was the love, the tremendous commitment that she had to books was probably the most appealing thing to me. Background! Background! Action man. Helen Hamp often took her books to Central Park to read, and so some of the scenes for the film are being shot there. She still lives close enough to be able to drop in on the filming and take part in a photo call with Anne Bancroft. She gave me, is all of this necessary? Did she remember the moment they were depicting on this particular day's shooting? Not really. I remember writing that I wanted a very small book of love poems, small enough to stick in a pants pocket and take to Central Park. And when I met Anne Bancroft this morning, she showed me the book. Oh, where'd they find this? I don't know, but they have found every single one of the books. And then I remembered the letter and I remembered the year. But being here is just kind of fun seeing all the hoopla without any sense that it has anything to do with me, really. And that hoopla in the park is also a million miles away from what was going on in England for the Charing Cross Road scenes, where they'd had to recreate the road on a film lot, since number 84 is now a modern-looking compact disc shop. Anthony Hopkins plays Frank Doyle, to whom Helen wrote asking for copies of books she couldn't get in the States. When I heard they were making a film of it and they wanted me to do it, I did think, how on earth are they going to make a film? of letters, you know, just letters. Yeah. It's very easy, it's an easy, it's a very easy job. I don't know, I have to learn very little dialogue. I think that's why I did it, really. And most of it is voiceover. I don't want to make it sound terribly boring that way, but it, uh, I'm intrigued, I, I hope it holds together. Well, it's kind of, uh, it's a very cheeky enterprise in a way, and that it's a love story which is totally subliminal between two people who never meet, one of whom lives in America and one in England. And their only means of communication is by letter. Uh, however, they are very remarkable letters, uh, and we are using a great deal of voiceover techniques that are very, I hope, skillfully counterpointed with the activities we see going on in the two countries. Um, it does mean in the shooting that for the rhythming of shots, I really need to know exactly how long a particular speech or a letter is going to take. So we have pre-recorded as much of that stuff as we can. And this little earwig I have in here is for me on dead silent takes, as it seems, on the floor. I'm actually hearing Tony Hopkins. Your Ellery Queen scripts sound rather fun. I wish we could have the chance of seeing some of them on our TV over here. It wants livening up a bit. Our TV, I mean, not your script. I would never have written it if Frank hadn't died. I remember the night that I sitting over dinner crying over his death and muttering, I have to write it. I w it would never have occurred to me that a business correspondence was going to make a book. When he died, I had a terrible need to recreate it in some permanent form for me, the way other people would want a photograph album. No shoes. I did read Hugh's screenplay. 
and I thought it was wonderful. But I concentrated on the things he'd added, you know, just here and there, a literary line or two, and a little dialogue for and Bancroft, which sounded so like me, I was surprised I hadn't said it. I loved it. I just thought it was wonderful. So I'm going to take care of myself and live till it comes out. I sincerely hope she does, and if the film is half as good as the TV production, they'll have done very well.